The Game Boy modern scene has come a long way from its grassroots of using simple things like loco glue and LEDs. It then transitioned into heavy modifications needed for IPS screens and then transitioned even further to drop-in replacements and still some modifications for bigger screens than the original parts. It's very easy nowadays to forget about a particular screen and in this one, I think this one is forgotten. It is a true drop-in replacement screen that's only a tiny bit smaller than the original and is now a lot cheaper than it was before. So let's compare the sizes. Here you have is the original screen and here is this drop-in replacement. As you can see, it's a tiny bit smaller. But when it's compared to stuff such like the McWill version, the McWill is even smaller than this and there are some like the full screen mods that of course are massive. So I have a Game Boy Color here that has some dead pixels and it has been grown a lot more than when we last saw it in the video that I basically got scammed, which you can check that up in the top right if you're interested. So this is the perfect candidate for this drop-in replacement. So let's remove all of the tri-ring screws from this Game Boy and open it up to install this kit. I'm also going to replace the shell because this one's quite grimy and broken with a brand new one since we're installing a nice IPS kit. But what I do want to do is take off the original labels and stickers and put them on the new case. Opening up the Game Boy, it was a bit stuck there and my god is this absolutely filthy. I'm glad I am replacing this and we will need to clean a lot of these contacts. And for some reason there is what seems to be a little bit of wood in my Game Boy. So let's remove the Phillips screws from the Game Boy board itself so we can fully take it out. We also need to disconnect the old screen and we can chuck this to one side. Let's start with putting the original serial sticker onto the new one. I'm not sure if I want to keep this original Game Boy Color sticker so let me know in the comments below if I should because there is quite a bit of damage to it. I could put a new one on. Let me know. So to move this across I'm going to put some fluid and let that soak in and then carefully peel it off and then dry it afterwards. And there we go, with that taken off, we can now carefully put it on. Just before we get to installing this drop-in replacement, let's give this Game Boy a clean because it really needs it. I will be using IPA to clean various areas and contacts. If you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. With that all cleaned up, we can now actually test this without putting it in the Game Boy. So I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. So setting up the various boards and the screen itself, and then some battery power. Let's turn it on, and it does seem to be working, so let's slide that down. And as you can see, it is looking very good. So now that we know everything works, let's go to put it in the Game Boy shell itself. One thing we will need with this drop-in kit is some spaces either side, and they provide this nice thick 3M foam. So I'm going to save you all the hassle and it should be about 4mm in width and 7mm in width for your spacers. So measure this up and cut out the foam, you should have a lot left just in case. So putting in the screen now, you want to put it roughly in the middle and again with those measured spacers, you put the 7mm one on the left hand side as you can see now and the 4mm one on the right hand side. I did need to add a little bit extra at the top to prevent the screen moving because as you can see it's slightly slanted so I did need to use a little bit more foam. As you can see now that is all in place. This kit does come with an adhesive layer that gets stuck on the back of the screen to prevent any shorting of any components. Now that was put on before we go any further let's give all these rubbers and buttons a nice clean because it definitely needs it. With those cleaned we can then carry on with the installation and I'm going to do a small mini montage of putting these all back in for you. Moving over to one of the boards that come with the screen, we need to connect up a few cables. So we have a touch sensor here for some extra features and again this is all drop in replacement, no soldering required. To carefully pull up the locks, you then slide the cable in, you should feel it slide into place and then you push down the locks. With that ready, you now want to carefully bend up this flex cable and insert it to the daughter board. 
and then lock it into place. Once this board is connected, we can then fold it in on itself to put it into the Game Boy Color. Those with a keen eye may have noticed that I'm using the version 3 of this kit. I believe we are now on version 5, which, which moves the touch sensor to the other side. So the other problem with this is there's quite a lot of force springing this up. So I'm going to use some Kapton tape to stick it down with that kept into place now. We can now grab the Game Boy itself, making sure to fit the speaker in first because we don't want that out of place while still keeping pressure on the drop-in screen. And then we should slide it in and everything should fit in. We can then put the free Phillips screws back into the Game Boy. And we can attach the new screen cable to the Game Boy, making sure to lock it into place. So in this version, the touch sensor is just going to go where this little IR connector is, but as you can see, it keeps flinging up. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of 3M adhesive to stick it into place because it really refuses to stay. This did not actually come with the kit. I don't see any reason why you couldn't use the foam that they provided, but it will probably be a very, very tight fit. So I would avoid using that. If you've bought the latest version, this probably won't be an issue at all. We should be able to get the other half of the new shell and slot it into place. Once it's in place, we can then put in the Y screws back in. I am actually going to use the original screws rather than the new screws. That's just personal preference. With that into place, there's one last thing to do, and that is to use the new lens. This is actually a glass lens, so it's very high quality and I really like it. It comes with two little plastic protectors, so let's separate these. With these separated, I can then peel away at the 3M adhesive that reveals the actual adhesive and clears the screen up. Now to carefully place this on, making sure there is no dust on the screen before doing this, and making sure not to get this protective layer stuck underneath. A little bit of pressure is required, but avoid pressing in the middle and potentially breaking the screen. And now that is done. What I do like about this that was not intentional is the Game Boy Color light. The actual light bit that they have added matches my shell, which is funny. I did not do that on purpose. I like how it's got the original sticker on still. So let's put some batteries in, put the battery cover on, and let's give it a test and see how well it looks. So I'm going to use Pokemon Crystal for this test and immediately I've noticed there's like a black bar at top but it seemed to be centered fine and I don't really notice it being a tiny bit smaller than the original screen which is great unlike the McGuill which it is quite noticeable that it is smaller. Of course this is no bigger than some of the full screens but those aren't technically drop-in replacements and require some modification. You're turning off the lights you could see it's very nicely lit up and this touch sensor will adjust the screen brightness so you can potentially save some of the battery life or have it just lower if you think it's too bright all in all i'm glad things are constantly moving there is always going to be better kits out there which means kits like this that to be fair is perfectly reasonable doesn't have all the features of the latest but you don't necessarily need those it's about the same size as the original screen it is a drop-in replacement and the price has gone down a lot because there are fancier kits out there so my question to you guys is do you actually need these fancier kits will you use all these features if that is a no then something like this that is a true drop-in replacement albeit it is an old kit now to me this kit covers all my needs and it is so easy to install 